Now, I know what you're thinking. How the heck did four kids from Liverpool not only kick off the British invasion, but become one of the most celebrated rock and roll groups of all time? Luck, right? Wrong. Are you familiar with the butterfly effect? I mention it because I believe it's applicable here. Did the Beatles become popular in America because the Beatles were popular in Europe? Or did the Beatles become popular in America because the Beatles were just so damn good? I firmly believe it's the latter. You see, American audiences already had rock and roll groups. It's hard to stand out amongst the sheer volume of talent. You can't just march up to Lady Liberty and ask her to hand you fame. You've got to convince her that not only does your music need to be heard, but the American people deserve to hear it too. But what if you had a band that had been performing for years across Europe? A fine-tuned, well-polished, finger-on-the-pulse-of-the-youth, four-man team. You could march up to the door, knock on it, with pure, loud, and powerful rock and roll but you need someone on the other side of the door to open it. And that starts with Marsha Albert. Now, believe me, there were big things happening across the pond, and the Beatles were selling more albums in the UK than you could shake a stick at, but not big sellers in the US until some of us vouch for them. So, you wanna know the story? Of course you do. You're a bright, forward-thinking person who knows good music when you hear it. So, what do you say? You wanna know? It all starts in Maryland. 15-year-old Marsha Albert witnesses a CBS report on this strange band from Liverpool causing all kinds of mayhem in Europe. In part of the clip, She Loves You airs, and Marsha falls in love with the song then and there. She immediately writes a letter to a local radio station in Washington, D.C., begging DJ Carol James to start playing the Beatles on the air. He thinks it's a fantastic idea, and through some serious luck and connections, gets a copy of I Want to Hold Your Hand, even though it wasn't supposed to be released in America yet. He plays it, and it spreads like wildfire across the country. Capitol Records threaten legal action against airplay in the US because they had their own plans for release. But it was unstoppable. America was falling in love with the Beatles. Capitol said, screw it, and officially released the album capitalizing on the free publicity, and boom, the song hits number one on Billboard. I Wanna Hold Your Hand was the first Beatles song to do so, and the boys were ecstatic. They finally broke through in America. And as for Marsha Albert, DJ Carol James told her if she could make it to the studio by five o'clock, he would let her introduce the Beatles to America. And little Marsha Albert did make it. And this is what the girl who helped kickstart the British invasion and Beatlemania had to say. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time on the air in the United States, here are the Beatles singing, I want to hold your hand. <laughs> 